Hello, I'm JW, and today we've got a fault. Now, uh, this is on a proper installation, and this uh, particular fault was reported by those that actually live there. And uh, I've got a bit of a video from the actual installation as well to uh, demonstrate the uh, symptoms of the situation. And it's one of these fairly unusual types of fault, and it must have existed for many years, and in fact it could have existed since the whole thing was installed around uh, 10 years ago or so. But as is often the case, there are no records of the installation, no uh, certificates or documentation whatsoever. Labelling on the consumer unit is uh, mediocre at best and uh, half of it's missing. And uh, really nobody knows much about it at all. And the symptoms of this fault were that this uh, particular block of flats, as it is, has lighting in the common stairways. And these are activated by motion sensors. So the idea that when you step out of your flat or whatever, motion sensor activates and turns on the lighting. And then, of course, when people have gone away, it turns off automatically so it doesn't stay on permanently and waste electricity. So fairly usual setup there. And the symptoms of this fault were that uh, the lights were staying on all the time and they were never turning off. And, of course, that was obviously racking up the electricity bill as this has rather a lot of lights on it. But uh, it turns out the fault was not, in fact, related to that. And although that was part of the deal, there was actually another fault as well, which, uh, of course, made things rather more complex. Now let's have a look at the installation. And uh, this is a bit of video. It's taken on a mobile phone, so it's not very good. But uh, basically we've got two lighting circuits here. And we're going to call these A and B. A on the left, B on the right. Both 6 amps. And the circuit breakers are actually a different design here because for some reason a couple of them have been replaced. Again, no documentation or information on why that is. And uh, nevertheless, there's two circuits and it's supposed to be one for the ground floor and another one for the first and the floors above that. Now we can see here that the lights are actually on, so let's just run this video and uh, see what happens when we turn these circuit breakers on and off. So if we turn that one off, the lights go off, but if we turn the other one on, the same lights come on, and then we can just repeat that there, so lights are on basically with either of the circuit breakers on. And if we check the voltage in here, we've got the uh, sort of 240 or whatever, and we check in here, we don't have anything. We've basically got about 15 volts there, which is apparently a DC voltage from the emergency lighting. And if we turn that one on, and the other one off. Then we can check in here, and now we've got the 240 in there and 240 in the other one. So uh, something a bit weird is going on there. And just to uh, final thing there, just check in each one with the power off. And you see we're basically getting that sort of 15 volts in one and nothing in the other. Now obviously there's some kind of connection between these two circuits, but the deal is here that the connection only seems to exist on one of the combinations, because if it was just a simple connection between the two lines, then either breaker on would result in the mains voltage showing up on both of them. But as we saw there, it's uh, one arrangement is it's on both. The other arrangement is only on one of them. So uh, something a bit uh, unusual is going on here. Now let's have a look at what the circuit should look like. And that's what we've got here. So on the left there, we've got what's represented inside the consumer unit on the left of the dotted line. So we've got the neutrals connected to the neutral bar marks with N in blue there. And then we have the two circuit breakers, A and B. And we've got the brown line conductors coming out of those going to the two circuits. And uh, within the circuits, so uh, we've basically got a PIR sensor, sort of infrared motion detector thing. And uh, from that, we've also got an additional third wire, which is the black one there. That is a switched line, so that uh, when the sensor detects motion, it connects that one to the brown. And then it turns on the light, represented by the yellow circle there. Now, on this drawing, I've only shown one sensor and one light. But in reality, there's actually uh, four sensors on each circuit, and there's about uh, 15 or so lights on each circuit as well. But uh, the wiring is the same. It just continues through to the other sensors and the other lights as we've got there. Now, how this is supposed to work is that if motion is detected, so for example on uh, circuit B here, the PIR sensor has a relay inside which just connects the line in brown to the switch line in black, completes the circuit, therefore, and the lights obviously turn on. And of course the same can happen with the A1. So as we've seen here, that will obviously turn those ones on. And obviously uh, both of them could be turned on as well. And the point of all this is that uh, they're two entirely separate circuits, so that sensor A only turns on the lights on circuit A, and of course sensor B only turns on the lights on circuit B as well. No connection between them. Now in terms of the faults, uh, what we've actually got here is a link between the two switched lines. So it looks like this. So you see the black wire there is actually joined, so the two circuits are connected together. And there isn't just this fault, there's actually another one. 
and that is the situation shown here. So essentially one of the sensors on circuit A is permanently on. It appears that the relay inside has sort of welded itself shut. So there's a permanent connection between uh, the line conductor A there and the switch line as it obviously goes through to both sets of lights. So the result of this is that uh, when we apply power to circuit A, then the lights turn on, and of course both sets of lights turn on because the link there in the black between the switch line. But crucially, when power is applied to A and B is disconnected, we don't get any voltage showing on B at the consumer unit, because of course all the sensors on circuit B are of course switched off, and there's no connection between the switch line and the line B there. However, if we remove power to circuit A, that link on A and that faulty sensor is still there. Now if we turn power on to circuit B, we get the lights turning on because when these sensors are first powered up, they actually connect through on the relay for a short period, and then they actually go off after the defined time. So what we actually get then is that uh, we've got power coming on on B, sensors are switched on so it connects through to the switch line, and even though there's no power being applied to A from the consumer unit, because there's that stuck uh, relay in one of the sensors, we also get power coming back on A, and of course all the lights are turning on because of the link on the black wire. So that is how we're getting a situation with B on, we're getting power coming back on A, but if we put power on A only, we don't get anything coming back on B. Now I don't know what testing was done when this was originally installed about 10 or so years ago, but uh, the problem with this kind of fault and this sort of interconnection here is that if you just tested from the consumer unit on the individual circuits, you wouldn't have necessarily found anything wrong. And because of those uh, PIR sensors are permanently connected, it's fairly likely that somebody just did an insulation resistance test by connecting line and neutral together for each circuit and then testing between that and earth. So that wouldn't have shown any connection between the circuits. The only way in this configuration that this fault would have been detected is if somebody actually tested between the two neutrals for the two separate circuits, or tested between the two lines for the two circuits, and assuming that the lamps were or the lights were actually installed, then they would have got some kind of connection via the light fittings and the PIR sensors. But that's not actually a standard test in terms of the uh, testing that's done on a new installation. Generally it's the individual circuits, and you don't generally check for connections between the individual circuits, so it's fairly likely that even if testing had been done at the time, this fault would not have been detected. Now, of course, once the installation was powered up, it should have been abundantly obvious that all of the lights were coming on, even though only one sensor was being activated, so somebody should have noticed that that was the case. However, bear in mind that these lights are actually on two different floors, so they may not have noticed, that, say, the lights upstairs were coming on when somebody was walking about downstairs and the other way around. So a rather nasty fault, and of course the original fault there with the uh, connection on the black has probably existed there since it was installed, and it was only really looked at because the uh, fault on A there with the sensor being stuck on permanently basically resulted in all these lights being left on 24 hours a day, which of course uh, was undesirable as it obviously caused a rather large increase in the electricity bill. So that's an example of a sort of real-world fault, and also one which turned out to be uh, rather more involved than just a uh, defective sensor. And of course we have that interconnection between the two circuits as well. So uh, that's it for this time, and until next time, thanks for watching.